is nonetheless really important actually to be in there. And I'll say that because validation from the design community is really important for clients who are looking to make a choice that's safe for them. And so if you are the head of the board of directors of a major Fortune 500 company, you want to know that this architect has been validated by the industry they work in. And that's where the AIA really comes in handy, right? The AIA awards carry a lot of weight among the business community because they understand that this body, the governing body of architecture, has awarded architects, or my architects, with the, with the important prize. And then there is this sort of other piece of it where on the left of this, of this table, you know, Fast Company has a really useful awards program, which actually is a great entry point for architects, the most innovative companies or the you know, best ideas uh, awards. And you can win this as an architect in a non-architecture category if you're doing something really provocative or something really strange. And the important thing here is that you're able to think about and hone in on what those ideas are. So as an example of this, while I worked at SOM, we managed to get uh, SOM in a Netflix special with Jonathan Van Ness from Birai. Uh, a lot of people questioned initially what was the value of doing this because it's not architectural record. And it, it was a kind of uncomfortable position initially, but the influx of engagement on social media, of questions through their online form, Jonathan Van Ness miraculously, without scripting, described SOM as the premier skyscraper people in the world. It was a very uninformed statement, but it really worked. Uh, Netflix has more than 80 million annual viewers. These people are your clients. They're, everybody is on Netflix. It's pretty much a kind of universal quality. Um, and these are just, in, that's just US and Canada. The worldwide numbers for Netflix are mind boggling. But the important thing is that they're sort of out there in that agora. And that selection, because of SOM's pretty remarkable, I'm biased, press machine uh, is such that they were able to be chosen for an opportunity like that because they have become synonymous with the category of skyscrapers. And there are lots of other firms who are doing this who get chosen for you know, National Geographic things and this kind of stuff, or CBS Sunday Morning, as Jeannie did for the opening of the American Museum of Natural History. So as an example of this, things you can do if you wanted to win a certain type of project. Um, let's say you want to win a transportation project this is where you can lead with messaging about your expertise in transportation, where you can pitch opinion stories. You know, my city needs a better train station because of X. This is a very salient topic, obviously, across the US at the moment. Um, you can write to the New York, New York Post and say, you know, we need X, Y, and Z for this neighborhood. Um, and you see this from time to time, and these things are just proactively decided by, you know, architects, again, hold this very esoteric place in society, and so being able to write into a newspaper and say, I, as an architect with a credential, I believe something and it should be written, has this sort of pureness that the public really responds to. You can also target social media posts. This is the beauty of big data. It's the only time I will say that. Um, to executives who, if you are trying to reach the you know, departments of transportation in any region, you can pay to have posts seen by these people um, on LinkedIn, and this is a way to, to build visibility, and it sounds kind of maybe evil, but it really is a tool that other brands are doing, and when you see a sponsored post in your feed, by and large, someone has paid for that to appear in your feed. And then, of course, prioritizing media stories that highlight your expertise in that category. These are just four different examples, but being able to help people understand that you have done this work before, whatever that work is, if you're trying to build a community center and you've done one before, a story about that in any magazine will leapfrog your, your credibility. But the really important thing, I think, which is a highly underrated exercise, is asking your clients how they found you. Periodically, um, I've suggested this to clients, and it's oftentimes, you know, the most bizarre one I heard was um, the CEO of a major Chinese company, his wife was riding in a private jet and picked up a copy of Interior Design Magazine and flipped through it and found one of my clients and then called and said to her husband, who is the head of this major company, uh, you should hire them. I saw them in this magazine on the plane. And this is how a lot of these decisions are made. I mean, barring all of the public procurement stuff, this is sort of the organic nature of visibility. And so, you know, if you're home on Netflix and someone's kid says, who designed that skyscraper? And then you go back and watch the episode, there is a sort of you know, we watched the traffic boost on SOM's website after that Netflix special came out, and it was wild. Tens of thousands of people going to their website to Google, you know, who are these people and why are they on the show? Uh, I'll burn through some kind of quick strategic
strategic things because I also want to make sure there's time for questions. Um, the really important thing 